Hey guys, I'm Randy with BRS TV and today we're putting together a complete reef system from start to finish using this 135 gallon Red Sea Max S500. In today's video, we'll highlight some of the unique features of a nearly turnkey type complete system like these, discuss how easy it can be to put together these larger tanks, especially with most of the work done for you by Red Sea, and show you how to turn this tank into a fully stocked living piece of art in your home. Complete reef setups that include pretty much everything you need except for the water, rocks, sand and corals offer reefers a very simple solution to creating a stunning reef tank without the hassle of needing to shop for all the individual components like lighting, flow, skimmers, auto top offs and more. That means you can spend less time wading through the sea of reef gear options and get to watching your tank grow and mature without second guessing if the equipment you chose is right for the goals you're trying to achieve. These complete reef options have many of the same benefits as an all-in-one tank, but are larger and usually more advanced not only in robust equipment, but also things like filtration methods such as adding a sump below the tank. Another benefit to a pre-built complete system is that you don't have to be an expert plumber or stand builder to put them together because everything is specifically designed to fit each tank option and all you need is a screwdriver and a star drill bit to get the job done. With Red Sea's Max S 400, 500, and 600 series tanks, you get a sharp looking tank and stand that easily outshines other off the shelf combos and will look good in most homes with their black and white cabinet options. With the exception of a heater, these tanks come with ultra clear glass and include all of the equipment that you'll need to run a thriving reef tank. Every bit of the Max S tanks are optimized not only for aesthetics like slide on trim pieces to cover the top and bottom edges of the tank, but also for functionality such as using the entire back of the tank as a place for multiple circulation pumps and as its own built in large auto top off reservoir. Red Sea also added AI Hydra 26 LED lights to their Max S tanks, which are more than capable of providing ample par and spread to support pretty much any tank type from softy to SPS with a very low profile and sleek mounting system. Along with that, they include unique cord management systems for the lights and recirculation pumps that creates a completely cord-free look in and around the tank. Underneath the tank, Red Sea continues with a high level of functionality with a single cord power center with 10 switchable outlets that not only covers all the included equipment, but also leaves you with additional outlets for any extras you may want to add. To support these larger Max S tanks, they come with rigid and very sturdy aluminum framing that's easy to put together with one single drill adapter that they also include for you. The frame also comes with several adjustable feet that you can use to make fine adjustments to balance the tank perfectly. Finally, you'll get a glass sump complete with filter socks, a unique skimmer with settings to rinse the cup, normal operations and for cleaning, and a reliable Italian-made return pump from Cice. Let's set up our own Red Sea Max S tank using the Max S 500, which comes in at 135 gallons of total water volume, measures about 50 and a half inches wide and about 27 and a half inches from front to back, and stands a total of about 69 inches tall with the lights mounted on top. This middle size Max S also comes with three of the Wi-Fi controlled AI Hydra 26s, a CJ return pump that puts out 1,850 gallons per hour, and three CJ circulation pumps at 570 gallons per hour each, which can provide enough directed flow to support even those high flow demand SPS tanks. So all we really need is a friend or two to help with the tank and a few other additional items. For setting this tank up, the only additional things we should need is some rock and sand for that reef-like look and for biological filtration, some water, salt and a refractometer, a heater or two, and finally some bottled bacteria starter to jumpstart the tank cycle. For the rock and sand in this tank, I'll be using 50 pounds of Carib Sea Special Grade Araga Live Sand and about 150 pounds of Reef Saver Rock. I'll also need to fill the tank with water and mix it to proper salinity to support the inhabitants and corals in the tank, in which case I'm using RODI water from our own RODI unit, red sea salt in the blue bucket, and a handheld refractometer to check my salt levels. After that, the only thing I'll need to get this tank up and running is some beneficial bacteria starter like this 8 ounce bottle of Dr. Tim's one and only, and a couple of Phoenix HPG 300 watt heaters to keep the entire tank at my target 78 degrees. Assembling the Red Sea Max S tank can be done alone, but it's best if you get a buddy or two to help with some of the heavy lifting or moving. There's really nothing to building the stand and comes together rather quickly since each piece is labeled and the parts are well organized in individual packages as you need them. Not only that, but you don't have to search around looking for the proper star bit for your drill or hand tool to tighten the frame screws because Red Sea has included that bit for you. 
One tip that I found helpful when building the stand for this Max S500 was to keep all the parts inside their original packaging with the labels on until I put them to use. Also, since my final location for this tank was nearly level, I threaded each nut on the stand feet down and then screwed them into place under the frame. With the stand put together and the cabinet skin added on, we can get some help from a friend or two to put the tank in place and align it on the frame. Next, we'll add the recirculation pump, first with the screens, and then drop the pumps into the back chamber and route the cords through the sleek cord management openings in the back. All that's left to do is to slide the sump into place, install the return pump, tighten the primary and emergency drain plumbing, and plumb in the C-Skim 1800 protein skimmer. Now you can put together the integrated power center and cabinet doors, then start filling up the tank. Let's briefly discuss physical installation of the tank and some considerations you may want to take into account when choosing a place for your new reef to live. Like I've mentioned before, these larger tanks can really start to add up in the pounds, not only from the tank itself, but also from the added sand, rock, and water, so it's probably best to set them up in or as close to its final location as possible. That said, choosing a place that's relatively level is ideal. However, with the Max S's adjustable feet, you can easily make adjustments as needed to balance the tank more evenly. Along with that, you should try to avoid sources of direct sunlight as it may promote unwanted algae growth in the areas where the light strikes the tank. However, this is not an absolute must. Another aspect of physical installation is the weight that comes with having a larger 100 plus gallon tank. These tanks can end up being substantially the heaviest piece of furniture in your home and some precautions should be considered as to the structural integrity of where they're going to be placed. You'll likely be fine placing the tank on the ground floor level near a perimeter or retaining wall. However, if you have any concerns, you may want to take further steps to be sure. With the tank in its final place, I can start bringing it to life by adding 50 pounds of Carib Sea Special Grade Aragalive Sand and build up my rockscape with about 150 pounds of Reef Saver Rock. Since larger tanks allow you to add more rock in wider and taller configurations than smaller ones, once you get your aquascape just right, you may want to consider securing it together at the joints with some heavy duty super glue like this BRS Extra Thick Gel or more robust adhesive like Jurassic Gel from Paleobond. Filling up the tank is next and we always opt for reverse osmosis deionized water from our own RODI unit here in house. You could source your water from a local fish store or perhaps filtered water from the local grocery store. However, at these larger volumes of water in the 100 plus gallons, I personally don't want to haul buckets or jugs back and forth until the tank is full. With that in mind, probably the easiest way to fill the tank will be to run the RODI tube into the tank and let it run until it's full. Just be sure to monitor the process so you don't overfill the tank because we definitely don't want water all over our floor. Since I don't have large amounts of storage to mix salt water in, I'm simply going to turn on all my pumps and add salt directly to the tank over the course of a few hours and periodically check it with my refractometer until it reaches my target salinity of 1.026 specific gravity or 35 parts per thousand. One reminder here, you can only do this for the initial filling and once livestock and living things are in the tank, you'll need to mix your salt water outside of the tank. Once my tank is full and mixed to proper salinity, I'll leave the lights off, heater set to 78 degrees, and pour in a single bottle of Dr. Tim's, then let the tank sit for about 30 days to fully cycle. During the cycle, every few days or so, I'll throw in a small pinch of food to keep the bacteria fed and check my ATO reservoir and fill it as needed. After the 30 days is up, I'll add in another bottle of Dr. Tim's, introduce my first few fish, and down the road start filling the tank with my favorite corals. Before I get to adding corals, I'll want to program and set up my light, which is very easy using the My AI app. For setting up your Hydra LEDs, Red Sea does have some guidelines for where to start, which call for using an acclimation period and increasing the intensity of the lights until they reach your desired levels. We took that one step further and developed some of the following spectrum intensities by using tested spectrum levels from Ecotech Marine and their Coral Lab experiments and our own BRS TV investigates findings for PAR and intensity requirements to provide a solid starting point for many popular tank types reefers keep. If you're starting your tank with some lower light demand corals like polyps and softies like these or even some LPS, you don't necessarily need 100% of the full intensity of the three Hydra 26 LEDs. You can set your UV to 60%, violets to 59%, royal blue to 39%, blues at 40%, green and deep red to 2%, and finally the cool white to 9%. 
However, if you're jumping into higher light demand corals like SPS and crusters and sticks, you could use the same settings but increase them equally by about 40 or 50 percent to reach those 250 to 350 par levels that SPS seem to thrive in. Maintaining a healthy and thriving reef tank isn't difficult at all, but will take a small bit of maintenance every couple of weeks or so. Aside from keeping the rear ATO reservoir full and occasionally cleaning the skimmer cup, many successful reefers will conduct a water change every one or two weeks to help reduce the built-up organics or contaminants in the water column that may fuel nuisance algae growth. You may also notice some buildup on the glass surfaces of the tank, which are easily removed with a magnetic scraper like the Tunzi Care Magnet Strong with a wide scraping blade for general removal and a smaller one that offers more pressure to get that tough buildup. Another option that we use here at BRS is the Flipper Max that utilizes a metallic scraping blade on one side and a soft pad on the other. Outside of that, there's not much more to do to the tank other than feed your fish and sit back and enjoy. However, if you want to save yourself from even more maintenance and headache than is necessary, try your best not to overfeed. Although your fish may seem like they're always hungry, avoiding overfeeding the tank will help to reduce waste in the tank that could break down and convert into a fuel source for that undesirable algae. The complete reef systems like the Red Sea Max S tanks are pretty close to as turnkey as you can get, so there's not much you need to accessorize them with. That said, there are a couple of optional accessories you could pick up to help with maintenance or general tank upkeep. It's obvious that larger volume tanks over 100 gallons require quite a bit of water initially, but they also need water for auto top off or the occasional water change. With that, getting your own RODI unit can really save your back and wallet over time when it comes to hauling water from the local fish store. For those of you whose goal it is to fill this tank with high flow demand corals like SPS, you may want to provide them with additional flow by adding a couple power heads to the sides of the tank. We really like these Tunzi Nanostream 6055 power heads that are controllable from 0 to 100% and have a variety of flow patterns. If you wanted to invest in something more sleek and streamlined that also keeps with the clean, cord-free look in the tank, we'd recommend two of the Ecotech Marine MP40s, which can also be programmed together via their wireless communication capabilities. Finally, to help make maintenance tasks like water changes a bit easier, you could also pick up a water change system like this one from Python that you can connect directly to your sink and start a siphon rather than suck on the end of a water change tube. Thanks for watching and if you have any more questions that we didn't answer here, feel free to give us a call, send us an email or hop on a chat. See you next time on BRS TV.